Hey guys, Drew Shetler here with Resonate Films and I just wanted to do a quick breakdown of my latest video project with Flux Studio. If you didn't see it, you can check it out in the link in the description. But I also wanted to show the intro to give some context for the breakdown and then we'll get right into it. Let's see the intro. First thing that I feel when I hold someone else's work or a piece of my own is the weight of that piece proportionate to its size. Is the body tall enough for the neck and how clean the lines are, how gentle and subtle the contouring is. Is it something that's going to be used every day? Is it just an object that's going to sit on a shelf? So I strive to create pieces that are striking and that reflect the time and care that I put into making them. So this video is a spec project and what I wanted to do was find a skilled craftsman like our character Derek uh, who's the owner of Flux Studio and tell a little bit about their story. And I really like the concept of someone who's highly skilled in an area and then see the journey it took to get to that point but also the unique challenges to push forward in that art form. But at the beginning, I knew nothing about ceramics and ideally you wanna create something you're familiar with but with this project, I wanted to push myself and open a new perspective. And I think that's important if you wanna grow. For camera and lenses, I use the Blackmagic Pocket 6K uh, and one shot with the Sony FX3. And then for my lenses, I use the Mikey Prime Cinema lenses, both the 50 and 35. So I found Flux Studio through Instagram and then actually called them met the owner, Derek. I told him what I was trying to accomplish and we set a couple dates for filming and then I got going on the pre-production process. And my initial thought or direction was to draw some metaphors between throwing pottery and the existential life experiences we have. But that was probably a little too deep for this and I decided to go a different route, be a little bit more relatable, a little bit more practical. And that's important because you don't wanna force a story or narrative because the best display of human authenticity is when you give people a space to be themselves. So for reference shots, I use something called frame set uh, to find a visual tone for lighting and mood. And I felt like that helped guide my overall vision for the cinematography. Frame set's a pretty great tool to find stills from commercial projects, whereas like shot deck is amazing, but it focuses more on the narrative side of things. You'll find that some projects require extensive shot listing and storyboarding, but to me, there was an important aspect of spontaneity that I wanted to include in this story. And this is why I set up the shoot in two days. The first day was intended to be a lighter day to get introduced to Derek, his students, and overall the art of ceramics. I was really able to understand more of what Derek does. And then on day two, I was able to craft the narrative from that context. So the main shots I got on day one uh, was of the class working on their projects. And again, really cool to see Derek in his element doing what he does best. And then it came time for day two. We began that day with the interview. And the reason I do this is because I take what I capture in the interview and then let that set the precedent for the rest of the shoot. Having a list of questions detailed and written beforehand is so crucial for nailing the right story because otherwise it's just a shot in the dark. And if you put the same time into asking thought provoking questions as you do your cinematography, your lighting, all of that stuff, your story will be that much better. For instance, if you're only asking basic questions, you're only going to get basic answers. But if you take the time to dig a little deeper, you can find some interesting answers. So after the interview, it was time for Derek to actually create something. And I wanted to set up the lights in a way that we didn't have to move them around very much because once he got going, there wasn't any going back. There wasn't like, oh, let's reshape that pot again, or let's retake that. It was just this unfolding process. And uh, for lighting, I used the Godox VL150 as my main key light and then lit it from the exterior outside a window. So the window had a way of framing it and uh, preventing that light spill. And then I did use a softbox with only one layer of diffusion to kind of soften up the light. And there were about five other windows that really didn't have any light going through them. They had curtains on all of them. 
I also used the Falcon Eyes F7 mini LED light to wrap the light around his face and then use for any fill light that was needed. I honestly find it really helpful to have these small battery powered lights when you're a solo filmmaker. It makes things go so much quicker when you're in a pinch. I also had a can of haze that I used to create some atmosphere. I've worked with haze machines in the past and they're fine, but a little sluggish and sometimes not always reliable. And this was the first time I had used a haze can and then I found out that it kind of makes things a little bit oily, but since we were already in a studio environment, it was pretty dirty, it didn't really matter and it worked exactly how I needed it to and that was just to create some volume, some fill in that space. The other thing I did was turn all the lights off in the studio. In terms of working with pottery, it was nicely lit, but the tone I wanted, I needed to turn them all off. So I ended up actually unscrewing the lights that I wanted off and then leaving a few of them on to create and shape the light how I wanted. Now that was only on day one, but day two, I turned all the lights off and just had that main key light and then the Falcon F7. In the exterior scenes, I just made sure we were shooting near the end of the day to get better quality light. I didn't really have any other time to bounce light or use negative fill in the exterior shots, but I think it turned out fine. And I think that's the point. If you're a small crew and really it was just me and one other person shooting behind the scenes and sometimes they would help, I was just trying to go as fast as possible, get the story and get the best possible shots. So you really have to think about that beforehand. Plan your shots according to the size of your crew. Sure, take more time to make a better shot when you have more crew or an extra set of hands. But if you don't, you're gonna have to be snappy. You're gonna have to make quick decisions. One of the exterior shots of the kiln, I didn't have my tripod with me. So I just set my camera up on an old table and used some other random objects to shim the front of the camera. And the light you see, I think was from a street lamp and it turned out okay. All right, now jumping over to the edit. You can see in the first 45 seconds, I knew I really needed to create a strong hook to pull in people's interest. And so I started off by establishing the scene with him weighing the clay, throwing it on the wheel, all the while listening to Derek, letting the story build, and then suddenly there's a quick montage of shots and the logo reveals. I think it's important after you use a lot of sound design in a montage to then follow that up with something very quiet or peaceful, which kind of creates a bit of tension or just really pulls you into the story. There's another part in the story itself where he talks about the challenges or just starting out in ceramics and the speed of the wheel, whipping the clay around. And I just added several shots in a row to build on that idea and make you feel a little of the anxiety that he's explaining. The other thing was breaking up his conversation with sort of anecdotal or documentary bits of sound and visual to really make the story come to life. For instance, in this moment here, he's talking about dealing with loss and defeat, and then we cut to a real story of what he's referring to, and then it transitions from here to the next chapter about the community that he's building with his pottery class. And then towards the end, I think it's good to bring things full circle. So as we started with him making this pot, we wrap up with the actual finished piece. We also leave with this feeling that finishing one piece is just an opportunity to learn how to make the next project even better. So I think that about wraps it up with this breakdown and uh, there you have it. So uh, that was a, a spec project, a passion project, didn't get paid for it, but I think there's an investment there that maybe you won't see immediately, but down the road. And you know, everyone is in different stages in their life and career. And I would encourage you to take risks and create opportunities that stretch you and your creativity. So that's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, would love to hear from you. Please like, subscribe, and have yourself a good day.